Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me again for another video on Linux. Uh, we just passed a thousand subscribers, which for a channel with only four videos is kind of astounding to me. So I want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing. Uh, your digital attention means a lot to me. Um, it's great. Seriously, I'm, I'm very pleased. Um, okay, so to on to today's subject. Uh, I just kind of wanted to show off a script that I use for text snippets. Uh, these are basically things that you type regularly in a couple of different contexts. It's one of those things that very few people do, but it's actually a fairly easy win for productivity. Um, it's surprising how many times you have to type the same thing into your computer, essentially doing data entry in your spare time for no pay. Um, now, on the Mac, they have a program called Text Expander, uh, which is very popular in productivity circles. Um, and it basically hooks onto your keystrokes and replaces preset strings on the fly for you. So you're typing like QZX or something and it will replace it with whatever as you go. Um, I think that might be possible in Linux um, with, with some uh, some fancy hooking onto X input or something. Um, and auto hotkey kind of works like that. But I tried it and it was a bit of a janky experience. Um, so I wrote something a bit simpler um, and nicer to use in my opinion. So let's have a look what I have come up with then. Um, it's uh, super simple. Um, so let's first make everything bigger. Uh, is it, what is it? I've, I've forgotten what I bound it to. There we go. That's probably a bit too big. There we go. Um, so Let's, uh, let's pull up a Vim window. Uh, yeah, cool. So I have bound this to mod S. So if I do mod S and then BEM, for instance, then I get my, uh, my email address, uh, my uh, business email address. BEM stands for business email address. If I do mod SWB, then I get my website, right? Um, because uh, WB for website. Uh, but I can also do mod s and today, which gives us the current date. So, um, you know, and that's that's dynamic. If I do that again, you know, it's slightly later. Um, so there's clearly something dynamic going on here, right? It's not just simple text. Um, so that's cool, right? Let's uh, let's dive into the oh, let's dive into. The script and see what's happening. Um, so line three here, we just define the folder in which the snippets are kept. In my case, it's dots slash snippets. Um, and then line five, we ls that folder and we pipe that into Rofi, uh, which gives us this menu or Rofi if you prefer. Um, uh, you could use D menu there instead. Uh, instead of uh, Rofi, I just I just prefer uh, prefer the aesthetics, I guess, um, and the extra features. Um, and then what we do is simple if statement dash F just checks if the file exists. So we're just saying if this file exists, then continue. Um, now you might think, why are we doing this? Because we've just ls it, so it obviously exists. That is just in case um, we exit out of Rofi just by pressing escape, right? So there's no um, uh, there's no file there, so it just, it just catches that. Um, and then we have this monster ternary here, which is kind of the... Uh, uh, the 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 um, the brains of the operation, right? So basically, we're just making one big long expression. Um, that's what this uh, this dollar and opening this brackets here, this parenthesis does here, um, and that's that's all one big long expression. And the result of that expression gets assigned to this data variable here. So the um, the dash x here, basically, what that's doing is it's saying return true if the file is executable. Um, it's checking to see if it's a script, essentially. Um, and if it is, then we pass through to this uh, logical and here, and we run the run the script, basically, and we, we send everything from the script back into that data variable. If it is not, then we go over here to this, uh, this or, um, which it, it'll fall through to if the expression is, is falsy. Um, and we just run head on the file, and we just do negative one bytes here, simply to get rid of the new line at the end of the at the end of the file, um, the end of the because head returns um, a new line. 
Um, and all that then gets piped back into data back here. So now we have a variable that's full of either the result of our script or the um, the, the file that we've passed in. Um, and then we do two commands here to print F on both of those and pipe them into both different types of clipboard. Uh, dash P and dash B are the, you know, the primary selection and the, um, the one that's the middle mouse button, I don't know what that's called. Um, and then we just do xdo tool. Uh, xdo tool is like a just an automation thing for X, which allows you to basically send events into X artificially. Um, and what we're doing there is just sending in shift insert. Um, shift insert is kind of the canonical um, way to paste in X from primary selection, and it works pretty much everywhere I've tried. Uh, the main place I use this snippet system is sending emails or something like that or um, in a browser, for instance, if I want to put my address in or my postcode or whatever. Um, I'll use it for that. Um, so what do these snippet files look like? I guess we should have a look at one. Um, if I do, so that's, so uh, if I do... Uh, well, let's look at the website one then. So that's my website, and it, it is literally just a file in there, right? Um, but likewise, we could look at today, and today is just a script that printf's out the date, right? Uh, we use printf and not echo because echo will add a new line, and we don't want that. We just want to print out the uh, print out the thing, and all my scripts that I use follow that convention just by using printf instead of echo. Okay, so. Okay, so there's a bit of an elephant in the room here in this script, and I kind of want to address uh, that, lest the internet gods take away my Linux license. Um, there's a group of people watching this who are about to comment, or who may have already commented in capital letters, you know, never pass ls, uh, which is what we're doing here, right? We're passing ls. Uh, we're, we're piping ls into things. Um, there's a good chance also that they will have linked a particular article. There's a very popular article about not uh, not passing LS. Um, so let's discuss that on kind of two fronts. So firstly, why should you, quote, never pass LS? Well, the main reason is that POSIX compliant file names can contain essentially any character except null. Um, they can have spaces, new lines, tab characters, and kind of all manner of control characters that you simply can't pass effectively with ls. Um, for instance, if a file in your snippets folder had a new line in it, uh, then the, in, in the file name, that is, then this script would break um, because it would read that as two different files because they would be on different, different files, right? Um, and that's fair criticism. But I would like to offer a counterpoint, if I may. Um, just don't put fucking new line characters in your snippet file names, right? Just don't do that and it won't be a problem. Who puts new lines into file names? Um, which kind of leads me on to my second, I guess, more nuanced point. Um, and that is that your personal scripts don't need to be perfect or universally portable, right? They are not production software. They don't even really need to be good. Um, Linux for me is about constructing a workspace that I find useful and that can enhance the way I work. There are glaring, horrible bugs in most of the personal scripts that I use for various things, but I don't account for them because my workflow doesn't require me to do so, and doing so just adds complexity to the script for no benefit. Managing edge cases is by definition complexity. Um, you know, they say that any old engineer can build a bridge that doesn't fall down, but only the best engineers can build a bridge that is barely standing, right? It's about solving the problem that you are facing in a way that is applicable to the requirements, right? Um, so next time someone criticizes one of your own personal scripts for some potential flaw, be safe in the knowledge that that person does not understand engineering. Um, having said that, if you plan to slap a name on your script and promote it on GitHub, then you have some responsibility to make sure it's decently made, right? There's a difference between personal code where you understand the environments and publish code where you do have to cater for other environments. Although I'd still pass LS, fuck the police. Finally, uh, I just want to say that I use this system for stuff that I need in web browsers and things like that. It's not for code. Um, and it's certainly not for passwords. Um, 
we'll do another video one day on my password management. Okay, I guess that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll uh, I'll see you next time. Next time, I think we'll uh, we'll do the long-awaited tour of my system. Right, let's uh, have a look at everything. Have a look at uh, my my actual IRL workspace. That might be fun. All right, thank you for watching. I'll uh, see you next time.